good morning uh, mr raja uh, it is a pleasure to connect with you um, and also congratulating you uh, for the 3d graphy medical award entrepreneur of the year uh, it is really encouraging to know that india has potential respondents like you who have really got the metal to start uh, a company uh, in think 3d and also now uh, it's been a confluence in terms of also being supported by the, the government of telangana as in the uh, the andhra pradesh government for, uh, for 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 the for the way you've actually shaped up your organization 3d printing services uh, uh, once again congratulations for your effort and let me ask you uh, uh, raja how did this all begin uh, if you can share your journey uh, to begin with for the audience thank you mr shibu and it's a great honor to be selected as entrepreneur of the year by 3d graphy so to it can be considered as a culmination of all the six years of hard work we had put in in think 3d so this company uh, we started in the year 2014 prior to that i was running a software company come document management systems company headquartered in switzerland uh, it's with my friend uh, who is a swiss national we both started it together so once i was in europe and i went to uh, uh, london uh, that time that was in 2014 prior to when we starting 3d printing and we saw this 3d printer in a british museum that was the first time that i would say that's my first encounter for a uh, towards 3d printer you know and I, it was quite i was curious about the machine i asked them some questions they explained what is what about what is all about 3d printing uh, how it functions and what are the implications of to the overall economy i got hooked to that uh, technology and i started doing quite some research once i came back to india right and then i spoke to prudvi uh, my good friend and a classmate from university and we both felt yes this is something interesting right custom manufacturing on demand anything on demand is the future like if you see about on demand publishing on demand ordering on demand manufacturing can also be the future and manufacturing as industry has not been revolutionized so far if you look at manufacturing for the last 5000 years the fundamental concepts of manufacturing are all the same casting machining forging molding right the element is the same thing even as recent as 1960s and 70s they were doing the same thing it's just the way they are doing it is faster better more complex items were coming uh, but then uh, uh, the very fundamental thing still remained the same mm-hmm. 3d printing is taking it head on right by doing additive manufacturing taking the additive manufacturing concept so uh, so we felt like this is really interesting this is going to disrupt the entire manufacturing space and and that's how we decided to jump into this particular industry so 2014 july we started this and uh, there were very very few companies at least in the desktop space so we thought like there comes a time that was the time when makeup bolt was doing really good and uh, there's a lot of wave around 3d printing with makeup bolt at maker and a lot of hype surrounding 3d printing and we do kind of felt like it also goes through the same journey as pc industry where there is in 1950s 1900 sorry 1990s there was a, a vision that there should be pc in every home right we felt and uh, we felt that happened by the way right and then by 2000s there was a pc in every home at least in the developed countries we thought the same thing would happen for 3d printing and then uh, and then uh, we thought people would be manufacturing uh, devices or parts or at their home itself so that was the genesis that was the vision democratizes democratize manufacturing through 3d printing and then yeah there were very few companies in india at that time we didn't have any uh, any mentors we didn't have any role models we didn't have any companies to emulate we just started off with a gut feel and then uh, and then uh, first few years things were great we, we were selling uh, uh, desktop 3d printers and uh, to various universities colleges and we were also offering uh, services many big corporates were also uh, buying 3d printers uh, and uh, at that time people didn't have much know how and people didn't have much understanding of 3d printing so our consulting services really helped them make a decision and really help them use the machines in the most optimal manner right but later in uh, but in like in 2017 we realized i don't we we personally realized that we don't see this going to be a desktop play right uh, uh, at least for the time being we realized that uh, you know people consumers who are buying this printer they're not using it for in fixing any components and then this the technology has a lot of 
limitations to it uh, uh, to be a proper desktop uh, player especially standardization is not there consistency is not there uh, uh, materials uh, are limited and then so we slowly focused on the industrial segment and pivoted in that sense from desktop to industrial and at the same time we got the opportunity from the government of andhra pradesh to set up a 3d printing facility in a dedicated india's first dedicated medical device manufacturing zone well initially we were apprehensive to uh, government talking about 3d printing itself was <laughs> was something very novel that time but we were a bit apprehensive but when i met the ceo of the park who is it's also a startup by the way the park itself is a startup and i met the ceo of the whole uh, park and then i we got very convinced because he knew what he was talking about and then uh, so we just blindly uh, again one more gut feel and the gut call i would say based on our instincts and then we got into it and then it shaped up really well and uh, we are we are uh, uh, serving lot of medical uh, device companies uh, inside the park and even outside the park and we are doing some amazing applications which i can tell you over the course of the interview uh, on how we are using uh, 3d printing for medical devices uh, um, yeah so this is our journey a very fascinating six year journey started up as a desktop play and ended up in being a pure industrial play with 3d printing Uh, and also low volume manufacturing as well in, which means cnc machining and injection molding yeah uh, that that that's interesting uh, uh, raja in mm-hmm. terms of shade and where you started you know starting small and going step by step in terms of uh, analyzing the potential of this technology going forward uh, uh, so what is the services that currently i mean uh, in medical when i'm saying uh, when i would like to understand from you medical which are the uh, the applications that you offer in terms of solutions rather see uh, medical uh, medical is a vast field and then and then and 3d printing is most applicable i would say in medical industry and aerospace i would say than many other industries you know okay. Okay. because in medical each human um, structure is unique right so uh, so we have um, so custom manufacturing is the way to go for medical right and now what we are doing in medical is there are two things one is uh, so so in medical in surgery we have pre surgical guides okay uh, pre surgical models surgical guides implants medical device prototyping which is different from a normal prototyping by the way i'll explain that as well right dental so there are so many other so many segments in medical where 3d printing is actually used in bioprinting also there are some cochlear implants uh, which we are working on and uh, artificial skin which we are working on inside the park in association with the park people so so dent so if i take it one by one uh, dental is a industry where dental labs are doing very active there you know so that's not an industry we are targeting per se because there are dental labs that are doing it and then dentists and dental labs the relationship was already there well established maybe we are guiding some dentists on intraoral scanning uh, so that they can even remove that one step of taking that impression and then sending it to the sending it to the hospital dental lab for making that uh, uh, artificial uh, teeth so uh, that is one area where we are targeting in the dental but per se dental is not an area where we are focusing a lot <laughs> and then comes um, this one uh, med- surgical models with surgical guides and implants right this is a segment where we are quite active in right we we do lot of uh, uh, pre surgical models for the for the patients and the doctors okay so they keep sending us the ct scans uh, diagram yeah. images and then we convert them and then in consultation with the doctor we make those ones right and then also uh, doc dentists need dentists need this different different jaw structures are the very complex jaw structures are they want multiple models of these jaw structures to train the students so we also do that uh, you know in batches every month uh, you are talking about 100 200 batches of this kind of dental jaw structures we will be providing to the people customers customers are doctors who are training the students by the way because previously there are only limited set of structures which they based on but different kinds of dental complexities itself can be new structure on on which they can train the students so the depth of training is really really high with this 3d printed uh, uh, this um, maxilla and uh, mandible okay and uh, uh, different kinds of axilla and mandible that is one right and then the third thing yeah surgical models please surgical guides also we supply and then implants yes we do some level of implants 
uh like uh, yeah, uh, cranial implants is one area where we focus on and then uh, uh, we we did some uh, tetanum implants right and then we tested some cytotoxicity and then uh, we sterilized it and then we gave it to the patients right we previously did some peak implants peak is a biodegradable plastic which has good strength as uh, uh, metal especially titanium relatively cheaper uh, but not much more expensive than any other plastic though. Mm. and uh, and yeah peak implants the peak is another beautiful material to to do implants with right so we did some peak implants and uh, so yeah these are the implants that we are doing okay and then the third major thing we are doing is medical device prototyping <laughs> though it's same as any other prototyping as per definition when you talk about medical device prototyping we have to talk about the material properties any other material random pla apis don't work in medical device prototyping you know when it's in medical devices this can be a, a ct scan device mri scan device we personally are working with a robotic surgical hand uh, so robotic surgical instrument you know yeah. you know robotic surgery there's only one robotic sur- very famous known company in the world is da vinci uh, yeah. which is into this robotic uh, surgical instruments now there is some indian companies in fact the one i'm closely working with uh, uh, they're trying to make a made in india low cost Uh, robotic surgical instrument right so i'm working closely with that company to devise uh, the components for this uh, entire instrument that they're developing okay, okay. so uh, so uh, so what happens is that you have this uh, this needles that go in you know and then you know and then it will pull the arteries veins and then they do the surgery using this uh, using this particular very thin minute uh, sharp needles right and where the doctor sits in the doctor doesn't sit with the patient doesn't stand near the patient he sits near the computer and then he uses this uh, these tools to guide that particular uh, instrument uh, to go in and then do the necessary incisions and then do the necessary surgical this really helps in cancer treatment so what we are doing there is material anything that touches the body mm-hmm. right has lot of regulations to it right so we have to identify the materials right we have to test the cytotoxicity of the materials we have to set the biodegradability of the materials we have to define the properties and we have to have a clean room we have to sterilize them you know so all these things you know or we have to we have to work on so we been working with them closely on various materials like peak you know, again i'm talking about peak because peak is a beautiful material when we talk about medical plastics in medical we the only perfect material we can think of is peak eh? altum is another material we are working closely these are materials by the way you know these, these materials we develop those prototypes and then we give to them right and then stainless steel stainless steel is also widely used in medical industry uh, so these are some of the and some of the beautiful prototypes we are doing on a on an ongoing basis in developing that particular surgical instrument right and that is one and uh, and beyond that yes we did the uh, uh, prototyping or batch production for many medical devices uh, like infrared thermometers you know when there was shortage of the components for infrared thermometers uh, ir thermometers that now we are using actually everywhere right we did a huge batch production for components for the ir thermometer right but this come under any other regular batch production concept only nothing particular very very specific to medical but yeah we are that those are medical industries only person okay correct right? so yeah this is what we are doing basically in the medical industry and then another important thing we are working on we are doing research on is uh, we are doing cochlear implants using it's a bioprinting concept implants uh, cochlear implants are the ones that they uh, for the for the uh, i think i think the deaf people you know uh, you can insert those implants they are very custom made cochlear implants we are working closely with uh, university of wollongong uh, or, and uh, amtz and we think 3d Uh, we are uh, we are uh, i mean up it's at a very early stage but we are working we are studying we are we are trying to figure out a way to you know develop this this particular products in india so that is another area we are actively collaborating with various agencies to develop artificial skin implants and then we are setting up a bioprinting lab as well here uh, uh, in amt is it uh, to 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 for people to work on especially doctors to work on artificial organs artificial uh, human tissues and all these ones Yes, so, so I think that's what we're working on. Yeah, I think you you do a great job in terms of covering a very uh, a, across uh, the the medical spectrum, from uh, mm-hmm. right. orthopedics. Uh, now, uh, Ajay, what is your uh, plan? Recently, when you did uh, also have a plan to uh, go global. What what, mm-hmm. what are your plans to go global, and how are you planning to do that? 
see um, though i am doing quite a bit on medical side uh, i work to position myself as a 3d printing company uh, like targeting multiple industries than only medical because that's how our journey was and then we are also doing for automotive uh, we are also doing work for aerospace as well right but see, uh, whenever i i i, I am an uh, basically i am a software engineer uh, by by education and also that's what i did before i got into 3d printing okay uh so though i uh, my six years of journey is decent in 3d printing i always look at it from a software perspective you know lately like you rightly said standardization standardization can be at two levels one is at the machine level one is at the process level mm-hmm. right so standardization machine level is also going on right uh, with machines improving uh, day, year on year right and the new machines new stability new consistency coming to these 3d printers which was not there when we even started in 2014 right but also the process there should be standardization in the process as well okay. so this is that is one area where i found a huge gap which i wanted to target because i i look i understand software more than uh, hardware you know okay. so uh, i look at the i look at these things from the software perspective as well like uh, so that is one uh, uh, so that is where i feel i can i can i can combine my my domain knowledge on 3d printing and my fundamental expertise in software and my understanding of software industry to develop solutions a low cost software solutions for 3d printing and then when i say software solution one is clearly erp there's a again that's where the process standardization comes into picture right if you look at many small or medium size of course there are big companies like siemens and all that they can afford very expensive expensive software right but if you go below that uh, that big corporates right Uh, many of these small and medium 3d printing or manufacturing tool rooms they don't have any good software to standardize their services right you know so that is one big problem we are facing even when we go to outsource to another vendors also right uh, this there is lack of consistency in the process lack of consistency in the communication lack of consistency it so happened that one one of the vendors you know my, one i'll give an example and then you understand how how unprofessional our back end standardization is you know one of my sales person name is mahesh ambala okay mm-hmm. right but he gave an order outsourced it to a third party and then that came in shipping right he saw ambala there and he sent it to ambala mm-hmm. he couriered that particular part to ambala thinking that he has to send it to ambala i know yeah. i was shocked when when i heard this thing but the fundamental issue here is the lack of standardization in the whole process you know yeah. right so i wanted to build that low cost software solution uh, so that many many smes in this segment not just they depending but also cnc machining uh can can also you uh, know uh, adapt the software and then you know be more automated more digitalized and then more more professional okay that is one segment where i i'm 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 looking at uh, uh, building solutions in the other segment here is this uh, see ultimately all said and then ultimately uh, it all boils down to cost mm-hmm. maybe future but then if it cost 10000 dollars when other technology cost 100 dollars you know right nobody you know same corporate will go for 10000 dollar work when the same thing is coming at 100 dollars okay mm-hmm. right so the decision making process there is no strong support system for decision making for a uh, end customer like say you talk about let's say uh, hero motors you know there is a component you know they don't know whether they should do it by 3d printing by a casting by a cnc machining which one is cheaper at what volume this is cheaper at what volume this is cheaper at what volume this is cheaper the data is not there for various components that they have right you know you understanding right so basically this decision support system wherein where they can upload the design uh, and then and then they can select what are parameters and then we tell them guys you know if you are making 10 pieces you know you better go for metal 3d printing you if you're going for 100 pieces you go for cnc if you're going for 1000 pieces you go for casting right so that they will be able to i can show the graphs so i can show uh, which materials properties matching and all these things you know you're yeah. trying to eliminate right. wastage give them a, a correct solution in terms of the offering exactly there is still there is still lot of uncertainty if you, they, they know everybody heard of 3d printing but they don't know whether it works out cheaper you know how to that whole data that whole analysis itself is a big project for many people that they're not able to even take the activity forward no right. once we do this activity and give them a very diy solution i'm sure many of them will convert it to 3d printing because they find that it's it's data is very clear out there that uh, that they should be able to you know decide by themselves all right so, did you ha- so do you have a repository of these case studies uh, raja for you to uh, you know because this is a 
ongoing process i'm sure right and mm-hmm. try and connect with the, the right uh, respondents who probably can consume this and who would mm-hmm. probably want to know this so do mm-hmm. you have a repository of these case studies that you have been able to build i mean i'm sure that is the uh, the way forward well i, I yes i worked closely with the indian navy Mm-hmm. and uh, uh, for doing some of the spare part digitalization for work right and then uh, after uh, pre corona we were very actively engaging with them to to on this particular work but again i think corona gave a pause to the whole exercise i think we will be doing it again once maybe next year which is basically you know various components in the ship digitalizing various components in the ship and then evaluating which is the better solution on that right so this gave us a know how you know Okay. On 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 how to go about this whole thing, right? Uh, but then once you build the solution, it has to be DIY. That's how we would do, we would look at it. You know, if a customer can log in and then he upload his own three D STL files and then select some parameters and then we'll show them the the entire data for them, right? And then similar designs, what similar designs? And then we make this you know like a match. If some vision is there, right? We show the similar designs for the design and then how people were opted. what people did and uh, stuff like that you know so that what we're trying to do is the decision support system this company you know we are helping them take the right decision <laughs> yes we need some data we need some analysis it requires ai and ml as well so all this work that we're doing in navy will give us an idea on how to build this whole solution <laughs> fantastic raj i mean you're doing a commendable job and it's an it's a it's a privilege to to have this honor bestowed upon you Uh, mm-hmm. for the good work that you're doing as an entrepreneur and uh, thank you so much raja for your time and uh, uh, wishing you all the best for your for the for, for for the company and your growth in terms of because the kind of intellect that you are and with all the information that you've been able to gather i'm sure uh, uh, you have a team to respond to it and then uh, make the best out of it uh, wishing you all the best and uh, i look forward to uh, being as we progress so that wherever we can as an institution can also uh, be a support for for us to work in conflict but that's the key because uh, trinity media is always been in the space in terms of seeing how we can work together with uh, respondents who been in the service space uh, and also for end users to connect and uh, be uh, updated so that they can get the best value uh, and uh, solutions from this technology because this technology has a great potential uh, raja do you think that uh, platforms like these like tdi graphy that we been able to formulate for dental and uh, medical would be of uh, for 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 your uh, active responsive uh, measure uh, in terms of being uh, something of benefit for for the industry at large a uh, 100% see uh, platforms especially such active platform as tdi graphy and with you helping this whole thing and then pushing it over the last 3 4 years which i have been observing closely the we haven't discussed much but the way consistently you are doing it right that's what matters and that's what i was also in a way uh, observing uh, from you you know the consistency with which you are taking this whole exercise forward right uh, it helps you know right oh it really really helps building a strong platform platforms need credibility right and then once you a strong credibility is built all the government agencies all the entrepreneurs everyone flocks to the platform because that gives a uniform a unified source of information of contacts of access of uh, of uh, growing this whole industry right so that in that sense yes you know uh, uh, you are doing a fantastic job and the 3d graphic platform uh, is definitely definitely help all i wish for you is to continue doing this thing uh, mr shibu and then and then make it a very credible source it i mean platforms take time and then i'm, I'm sure that over a couple of years later it will become the you know most uh, authentic voice of 3d printing in medical industry in india yeah. thank you so much raja and it was a pleasure having an interview with you and congratulations uh, once once again for your commendable uh, achievement uh, and also to be honored the entrepreneur mm-hmm. and we look forward to having more entrepreneurs like you and you can be an inspiration for many uh, new startup companies because you have a, a good story to uh, share uh, from maybe you started in uh, now where you actually been able to structure your company and uh, wishing you all the best raja and thank you so much for your time thanks a lot shibu and it's a great honor to be selected as entrepreneur of the year thanks a lot and then let's catch base on a regular basis going forward sure.